Welcome once again. Right now we're on John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Evidence of the Resurrection. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went early, while it was still dark, to the tomb, and saw the stone taken away from the tomb. Therefore she ran and came to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, that would be John, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have laid him. Therefore Peter and the other disciple went out, and they went toward the tomb. Some of you might be saying, why or how do we say that where it says the other disciple or the disciple whom Jesus loved, why do we say that was John? Well, you see here, the, the thinking behind this is that John, who wrote this book, is not going to be bragging about himself. He's going to be speaking about himself in the third person, okay? He, you know, being a disciple of Jesus, he would be a very humble man. And if he were the disciple whom Jesus loved, then he would have been the favorite disciple. And being the favorite disciple, that would mean that he would have had to have been a very humble man. Okay, you can't be very close to, to the Lord at all without being humble. Verse 3 again, Therefore Peter and the other disciple went out, and they went toward the tomb. They both ran together. The other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen clothes lying, yet he didn't enter in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and entered into the tomb. You know, I've heard it speculated that Simon Peter might have been a bigger man or a heavier man. That's why the other disciple ran faster than Simon Peter did. I know that's just speculation, but uh, kind of an interesting thing to think about. How come the, the disciple whom Jesus loved ran faster? Was it just because like he was the favorite disciple and he was more anxious than Peter to see? Or was it more of a biological thing like, well... You know, the disciple whom Jesus loved, John, was a little bit more on the fit side as opposed to Peter. Continuing, he saw the linen clothes lying and the cloth that had been on his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. So then the other disciple who came first to the tomb also entered in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they didn't know the scripture that he must rise from the dead. So the disciples went again to their own homes. There are a few things we can talk about right here. Number one is, why did John wait until Peter entered the tomb first? Well, again, there is speculation that Peter was older than John. And so John, respecting the elder, let Peter go first into the tomb. Another thing is, how is it, okay, they walked and talked with Jesus, at, you know, they say about three years or so, okay? How is it that they did not understand what happened? And that just makes me think about a lot of Christians today. You know, a lot of believers today, there are a lot of really what I call gold nuggets in the scripture that they just don't see. Verse 11, but Mary was standing outside at the tomb weeping. So as she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. They asked her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing and didn't know that it was Jesus. Very, very interesting here. We've got someone who knew Jesus very well, yet when he was right there, right there with her, she saw him. She turned around. She looked. She saw him, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. It reminds me of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. You know, they're walking and talking with Jesus about Jesus, and they didn't even know it was him. You know, so how is that possible? I think that the post-resurrection Jesus looked differently than the pre-resurrection Jesus. There's a number of things that could have happened here. Jesus could have been such a very common-looking guy that 
it would be easy for him to be mistaken for somebody else. Verse 15, up at the top here, Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. She thought that they didn't want Jesus' body there, that somebody came just to move him, and, and she wanted the body of Jesus. Well, <laughs> how many of us would have did the same thing? Oh, if you, don't want, if you don't want the body of Jesus, we'll come and take it. Verse 16, Jesus said to her, Miriam, or Mary. Her original Hebrew name would have been Miriam. She turned and said to him, Rabboni. Rabboni is a transliteration of the Hebrew word for great teacher or my teacher, which is to say teacher. Again, in the notes here, or master. We see that Jesus is called a rabbi. Okay, Rabboni is, is another way of addressing a rabbi. Okay, he is a Jewish rabbi an Orthodox Jewish rabbi at that. Verse 17, Jesus said to her, Don't hold me, for I haven't yet ascended to my father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and to your father, to my God and to your God. Now, there's a few things we need to talk about in this particular verse. Jesus said to Mary, Don't hold me. In other, other translations, don't touch me. What this means is Jesus is saying, basically, just don't hang on to me now. You, you know, don't, uh, don't, don't try to restrain me, you know, because I haven't, I haven't went to the Father yet. And like I said before, it is expedient. It is best for you that I go away. Remember when he said that a few chapters ago? It's best that I go. And I know a lot of people today would be like, well, I mean, I, we wish that Jesus were here. Then we could ask him questions and talk to him and we can really know him. But Jesus said it's best that he went away. Think about that for a second. Because he said if he didn't go away, the Spirit of God wouldn't have come as he did. And then Jesus said, I am going to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Now, I know a lot of people use this verse or use this particular quote when he said, I go to my Father and your Father and, I, and I'm going to my God and your God as a, a way of saying that Jesus is not divine, that he's not, you know, he's not God, he's not the son of God, he's just a human, and he's going to God, okay? Now, you need to realize here that Jesus is talking about God in the context of the Father, okay? He's saying, my Father, your Father. In other words, i.e., my God, your God, okay? That is not to say that he doesn't have a divine nature, you know, being born of God as he was, as John says, the very same, you see, the very, the very same person who wrote this book, John, also wrote 1 John, which talks a lot about, you know, someone who's born of God. They have the seed of God in him. They have the nature of God, okay? So a lot of people that like to quote this verse to try to shoot down, you know, Jesus, his divinity, this kind of stuff, they completely ignore what everything else that John had has to say. So if you're going to quote this verse, keep it in context here, right? Keep it in context with the same author, the very same hand that penned these words also said that whoever is born of God has the seed of God in him, has the nature of God in him. So Jesus did have the nature of God. Was he God the Father? Obviously not. You know, he says, I'm going to God the Father. I'm going to my Father, your Father, my God, your God. So he's not God the Father. The Father is a different person. However, Jesus is a partaker of the nature of God with the Father. Verse 18, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had said these things to her. Very, very awesome portion of scripture. Again, what we are reading here is just so marvelous. And you know, we are so privileged and so blessed to be able to read these ancient words so that we could also partake of the same things that the disciples of the Lord partook of. As you go your way, may God bless you. 
give you a spirit of revelation to see things that your peers have never seen. And as you call upon him, may he show you great and mighty things.